What's up guys, it's Instinct here and today I'll be showing you guys how to make the shake animation that you just saw. If you like how these shakes look then drop a like as it would help me out a ton and with all that being said, let's jump right into the tutorial. Let me fuck you right Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to need to do is install Sapphire plugins. Now these plugins, I will leave a link in the description on how you guys can get these for free. And yeah, so once you guys have Sapphire plugins, you guys can go ahead into your video effects. Scroll down till you see S underscore shake and uh, this is the shake effect. Now what you guys want to do is, I've already done this obviously, but just in, go ahead and import your project media, it could be a logo, it could be like, I don't know, a Call of Duty clip or whatever you have, whatever you want to apply the shake on, go ahead and just import it. And then just drag it into the timeline. Once you do that, go ahead and again drag your audio into the timeline, maybe add a little transition, um, but all that is optional. So basically what you want to go ahead and do is place a marker at the drops. I've already done this, you can see. I'll play it right now. So yeah, basically just go ahead into each drop and, and just click M. And what this will do is it will place a marker. You guys can just go ahead and zoom in and just click M wherever the... Um, wherever the drop is. Um, it's kind of hard to explain how to do this. It's kind of self-explanatory, I'm pretty sure. It's kind of self-explanatory as well. So yeah, so basically just get your markers down. It's not too hard. Again, just click N. And if for some reason you messed up, you can just click on the marker, right click, and then click delete. And it will delete the marker. I'm gonna hit Control Z to bring that back. And then let's say if you got it a couple like too late, like the drop is right here, right? The drop's right here. And you like press it too late or something, you can just go ahead and just drag it to wherever you want. So I'm gonna put it back and about right there is where I had it. Right there. Actually I think right there. Yeah. visualize how uh, the arrowhead this goes over the marker as the beat drops every time so if you pay attention you can kind of see that. Alright so basically once you have all this done we can actually start applying the shake so go ahead and click video effects go to s underscore shake I highly do not recommend typing it in up here because Personally, whenever I use this search bar, it usually crashes, so that's kind of why I don't use it. So just go ahead and scroll down to see shake, click on shake, and these are my presets here. You guys won't have these, but I can just show you guys what I usually do for them. So go ahead and just drag the default one on to whatever you want the shake effect to be on. And once you see this, go ahead and check motion blur. These should already be on reflect, but if they're not, go ahead and just set them both on reflect. And then uh, click these two animate buttons. Alright, so once you have that, that's pretty much it. Now the rest is just keyframing. Alright, so first thing you want to do is click on the first frame and set them all the way down to nothing. So just put this one at zero, put this one at 0 0.10. Alright, so... Now what you want to do is you want to click, um, actually click this button, make sure this is toggled. Um, what this does is it lines your this with the one on the um, thing. So you can clearly see I'm moving it around and it's not moving with it. But if I click this, it will move it around with it. So that's just what that does. Always keep this toggled. Alright, so just go ahead and click this uh, your marker wherever you want to sync it with and then drag this onto that marker and then click on it and press the arrow key to go one frame back and set that keyframe to one frame before the drop, right? So, yeah. All right, so once that is done, go ahead and click on these two little circles right here, right click and set them to slow. 
and then set the other one to slow as well. So we're both on slow. All right, so go ahead and click on the keyframe, go one frame forward, and make sure you are on your marker here. And then for hard shakes, you want the amplitude up higher. For low shakes, you want it lower. Um, I usually stick around 0.5 for hard shakes and like 0.3 or 0.4. All right, 0.2 to 0.3 for soft shakes, 0.4 to 0.5 for harder shakes. All right. So this one is a soft shake, so I'm gonna go ahead and just send this to 0.4. Um, so just drag it to 0.4, and if for some reason you can't get on 0.4, you can just go ahead and type in 0.4. All right, so I set it to 0.4 on the uh, marker here, and yeah, and somehow the uh, frame got messed up, what? All right, so I don't even know what happened. So I'm just gonna set that back one frame, make sure that is one frame, and then go ahead and just set this to 0.4. Again, don't really know what happened there, but we can simply fix it like that. All right, so this is at 0.4, and then, um, and it's on the marker. So go ahead and just drag the frequency up all the way. So make sure this is on the drop and the frequency, or er, the frequency is at 30, and the amplitude is at 0.4 for a soft shake. All right, and make sure it's on the marker. So once it is, uh, go ahead and again, set these to fast this time. Both of these set it to fast. All right, so th this is on the marker. And basically, this has no effect. Then this has a lot of effect. You can kind of see up here it, it blurs. So now what you want to do is go about 10 to 15 frames I'd say to about like maybe here or so and then set the frequency all the way to 0 0.10 again and set the amplitude to like 0.2 or 0.1 I'm gonna go with 0.2 and click enter now this will make another keyframe and again go ahead and just set these to slow this time both of them to slow and then that's basically your shake um, this is a softer shake, so let's see how it looks. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. So, yeah. Again, you guys can click this button and it will go to the full screen, and you guys can view it there and then click escape to go back into your normal window. Now, if you guys have dual monitors by chance, um, I'm pretty sure that if you click this button, it will send it to the other monitor. Um, I honestly don't remember how to do that, but I know there's a way to do it. Maybe look up a tutorial. It'll make editing slightly easier for you, but yeah. Alright, going on to the next drop. Now, if you listen, this drop is slightly harder than this drop. So, it goes weak, strong, weak, strong. Just li go ahead and listen. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but my ears sensor that this is small, this is a softer shake, this is a harder one, this is a softer one, and this is a harder one. So I'm going to alternate between the shakes. So for this one, I'm going to go harder. So I'm just going to raise the amplitude slightly more than I did last time. So again, go on to this marker. Click the left arrow key one time. Make sure one frame before the marker. Go ahead and click this plus button it will add a keyframe also you can just duplicate right click on this one and click copy and go to the marker go one frame before and paste it in there it's basically the same thing basically you're just copying this marker or this keyframe to be the exact as this one so between this time right here absolutely nothing happens that's basically what you're doing now if you didn't have this keyframe right here and you made a keyframe at the drop um, it would go from here to here, it would transition into the, um, the next shake, so you don't want that, you just want it to be nothing here, then on the drop, it shake. Alright, so, go ahead to amplitude, and I'm gonna drag it up to 0 0.6, 0 0.6 might be too strong, if not, I'll go to 0 0.5, actually I'm gonna go to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then again, with the frequency, all the way up to 30. 
And um, I forgot to set these to slow, so I'm going to do that. Again, always set the ones before the keyframe to slow. The ones on the keyframe to fast, and then the ones after the keyframe to slow. You always want slow, fast, and slow. Alright, so again, make sure this is on the marker here where you uh, synced it on the drop. And um, go ahead and just go a little bit, like maybe like 10 to 15 frames. Honestly, you guys can mess around with this. The closer it is to the um, drop, uh, the shorter the effect, but like the stronger it is in a way because it has to tra it has less time to transition Which kind of makes it stronger. I don't know. Maybe this doesn't make sense to you But in in my opinion the since it's happening faster It looks stronger. So just just keep that in mind and then the further away the The more time it transitions so the effect is slower which makes it like less strong if that makes sense um, but yeah, so go ahead and go to like, uh, maybe like, uh, about here maybe? Uh, usually 10 to 15 keyframes is like the sweet spot, so I'm gonna go to about right here. And then, uh, again, drag frequency all the way down, and then I'm gonna drag amplitude to, uh, 3.3 this time. And then again, set these to slow. And that's basically it. You just keep doing this, and uh, you, you can mess around with the settings. Um, m maybe change the frequency if it's like shaking too much. Um, maybe lower to like 20 or something. Um, if it's not shaking enough, maybe set it to like 50. I'm pretty sure you can just, um, yep, set it to 50. Um, but I'm not gonna set it to 50. I'm gonna keep it at 30. Um, if it's not like going far enough out, uh, change the amplitude like higher to maybe like 0.7 or something, uh, and just kind of mess around. But these are like the general settings that I use for shake. And um, now I'm just gonna finish the last two drops, but I'm probably gonna speed it up. So enjoy this little speed montage. Alright, so I kind of just finished them and now let's see how it looks. Also, if you guys are experiencing lag, you guys can go ahead and just change this to draft and go to quarter. And it'll lower the quality a ton so that it'll make it lag less. Um, but don't worry, when you render it out, it'll be whatever quality you have it set to. So for example, 1080p, 60 frames per second. If you render it out at 1080p, 60 frames per second. So yeah, this basically doesn't affect the render at all. So let's go ahead and preview this. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial. Comment below what other videos you guys would like to see. Anyways, peace. I have done for my love.